Welcome to the Deal Machine Real Estate Investing Podcast, where we help ambitious W-2 employees who want to leave their job in the next 12 months, earn a million dollars per year, drive their dream car, pursue their passions, and take control of their life. We'll actually teach you by interviewing people who have replaced their W-2 income through the proven business model of wholesaling real estate, a way to earn big checks by finding discounted real estate and passing it off to an investor who has money and can give you a $25,000 finder's fee for finding the deal. We're going to give you two weekly interviews plus one expert-led masterclass in front of a live Q&A audience of the Deal Machine community, people who are trying to get this journey done themselves. My co-host is Ryan Haywood, whose sales job was cut when his commissions were cut in 2019, so he quit. And his wife was pregnant at the time, so he actually took a 14-day wholesaling challenge and made 8500 bucks and has gone on to do 400 deals since then in St. Joseph, Missouri. I'm David Lecco, and I created a process for finding off-market deals that has helped people close 10,000 deals in all 50 states, which turned into the software platform Deal Machine. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. If you're in a job that you hate and you want to build a life you love, we teach you how to do that through the proven business model of wholesaling real estate. A huge reason why it's so popular is you don't need a ton of money to start this business that can become a cash machine. So if you guys have gotten any value from this podcast so far, make sure you're subscribed. That would make me and Ryan very happy. And it would also give you the content you need to stay motivated to do this business model. And we've got a very special guest, Michael McDonald, who's done over 200 deals. And he's gonna walk us through how he made $23,000 on his very first deal. The Deal Machine REI Podcast. Everything you need to know to get started in real estate investing. Welcome to the show, Michael. David, what's up, man? Thanks for having me on. Of course. Looking forward to this. So how'd you do it? Well, um, a lot of trial and error. I mean, just like pretty much most people I would imagine, you know, it was part time for the first you know, year and a half. And then through that experience, I met a gentleman and uh, kind of helped me get started, you know, with finding off market direct to seller because I was failing on finding properties on the MLS, big surprise, right? And um, one of my first strategies was driving for dollars. I use the deal machine app. So shout out, you know, unintentionally, right? It's what is driving it was, for dollars? Driving for dollars is this was before deal machine, but then I transitioned to getting smarter. But I was driving around writing down addresses and um, I'd go home, pull up the assessor website, type in the address, find the owner's name, hand write the postcards. Um, I'll never forget that. It, you know, I think I did 2000 handwritten and uh, send them out to the homeowners, wait for them to call you back and uh, have a conversation, pre-qualify, see if they're interested in selling their house. Got it. Was this random or like what was driving you to try out this new type of business? That was actually guidance from the gentleman who I met. Um, so prior to meeting this guy, I had done a three-day event, put the 20000 on credit cards that I didn't have as I was working as a nutritionist making 30,000 a year. And um, thankfully I met him because the strategies that I was learning about the on-market stuff just wasn't working for me. And he's like, hey, um, let's partner up. We'll split the first six deals and hop in the car. Let's go. I'm like, wait a second. You're, 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 we're gonna go drive around? What do you mean, right? It was kind of odd. I'd never heard of that before. He's like, yeah, just you know, pay attention. So we started driving around, writing down addresses of properties with, you know, cars in the driveway, flat tires, um, tall grass, broken windows, like just clearly vacant or distressed properties. And uh, got a good list of them. Went home and and started plugging them in the system and started calling them, texting them, postcarding them, whatever it took to really get get a hold of them. That's amazing. So what motivated you? so bad to spend $20,000 to learn what you just revealed on this podcast for free. <laughs> right? That's yeah, no kidding, right? Uh, well, I mean, it was at a career that I felt like it was kind of a dead end for me. It wasn't, uh, I'm going to provide the life that I knew my family deserved. And so 
Um, shortly after making that investment, my wife found out that we were expecting and there was just no way that I was going to be able to provide for my family uh, with on a $30,000 a year salary, right? Big surprise, but yeah, that was four years ago. But at least you were healthy. I mean, you were a nutritionist. So you had health on your side. At least I was healthy. Love that. So you, you put a lot of energy into starting something new, so much so that you spent $20,000. Was she cool with it too? She was support. Yeah, surprisingly, she supported the decision. And I think there was a lot of faith at that time. No, no question about it. there was a lot of faith at that time because neither one of us really knew, like, was this actually going to work out? Like, we didn't even know what wholesaling was. Mm -hmm. All I heard at that event, though, was make money in real estate with little to no money down. And they were like, you can do $10,000 deals, $20,000, $30,000. And I'm like, okay, so you're saying, like, all I need to do is one deal. Yeah. And, like, I can pay this back. And then they sold me, man. Yeah. And so... That was that was it. So you hopped in this with the in the car with your mentor. You found some rundown houses. You you sent out two thousand postcards, and I would say just right there is an amazing gift that you gave yourself. Was you 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 really bought the discipline, right? You spent the money, so then you had to do it. I think a lot of people, if they struggle to do it, it's because that doubt prevents them to sending enough mail or finding enough properties or sticking with it long enough. But I I loved that you sent out 2000 because that is a good number. Somebody called you back, you got it under contract, and then you pass it off to some buyer, some investor, and you guys split the $23,000 fee, right? The, 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 the buyer's right. fee. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was the most interesting deal to date. Big surprise, right? Like the the first deal, what could go wrong? <laughs> um, everything went wrong. It, you don't set the proper expectations for the seller. 15 buyers show up because it's such a great deal. And the buyer was an investor himself. And he was like, wow, you have a lot of partners. <laughs> and and then the appraiser shows up because I didn't realize there was a contingency on the line of credit the buyer that I chose had. And he's like, I'm so confused here. So you have this property under contract for 180000 but they're saying that it needs to appraise for 211000 If you do the math on that, that's 30 thousand, right? There's an agent involved. There's other moving parts. So like this was interesting. I was in there doing the repairs for the CEO. Oh, it, like it was just a crazy deal. Yeah, that is crazy. And and did you would you were you upfront with the seller and you said, Hey, I'm wholesaling this? Or did you tell him like I've got a lot of partners I want to look through this property before we close? Yeah, I know I've never I've never told a uh, a seller that bluntly that I'm wholesaling it. Um, I think my mentor had trained me to basically just say that, hey, we, we bring in partners, investors, contractors. And, I, and nowadays I over-exaggerate like, hey, everybody and their dogs. Like, because we've had families come through our walkthroughs before. It's like, wait a second. They don't look like investors, right? This is like a, this is interesting. So we just over-exaggerate it nowadays. Gotcha. That way you set the expectation and you deliver, you over-deliver. Or under exactly. in this case, but that's a good thing. Under-delivered in that case, yeah. yep. All right, so if you made half of $23,000, that means you have paid off potentially half of your investment so far. So what did you do next? Yeah, so thankfully I knew that my vision for wholesaling was not to just do a deal and be done. Like it was to do, set this up as a business. I took money from that, obviously paid down credit cards, um, put more money back into marketing, and kept going you know I, I don't think I paid myself much um, because I was I was so focused on my next deal and getting money to continue to build this up to scale it gotcha okay and then what did that look like were you sending rundown houses more mail or were you pulling other lists too yeah so I was uh, definitely sending the rundown houses mail because that was what was working and then I started pulling, you know, high equity, absentee, um, and sending those people mail. And then driving around, I mean, I was knocking doors, I was going to garage sales, I was going to estate sales, like just asking questions, being curious, and just telling everybody what I was up to. Sounds similar to Ryan's story. He made a Facebook post and he found a deal. Why, why garage sales? Yeah, so typically people, you know, Obviously, there's times a year for garage sales, but like if you see a random garage sale, 
there's probably a reason why they're trying to get rid of some stuff. And so I think I just heard this on a podcast and I'm like, hmm, I think this person's onto something. So when I was there, I didn't just like act curious and buying everything. I just got to the point. I'm like, hey, listen, like, I'm, I'm curious, like, you know, have you guys ever thought about selling the property? And uh, one time I did a drive by the the guy had stuff out front, like a yard sale. And he's like, let me actually introduce you to the guy who owns the property. He is selling the property. I'm like, really? And that turned out to be a 20, that was like a $25,000 deal just from driving past and asking a single question. It was, it was one of my best deals early on. I'm so, but how you talk about virtual, how do you do that if you're virtual? I mean, that is more of a local kind of thing, right? That that's definitely a local thing. And that was when I was local in that market. That was when I just got started. Um, I mean, with the apps though, right? You can, you can see pretty distressed properties. You're not going to be able to talk to the neighbor, but you can definitely do the driving for dollars virtually too. Gotcha. That's a nugget right there. I hope everybody caught that. Cause I'm for me, I'm Think like, again, okay. for the people in the back. That's right. Pull your you newspaper up. and go to all the garage sales this weekend. Yeah. Cause there may be a deal like that could be if your local newspaper shows 50 to a hundred garage sales, that's 50 to a hundred leads that might actually be interested in selling the house. Yeah. I mean, and, and when you approach them, you can just be blunt just say, Hey, you're probably not interested in selling your property. I'm just going around the neighbor cause I'm looking for property to buy. Do you know of anybody like, Hey, maybe it's not them, but maybe their neighbor like this guy did. We'll introduce you to the person who is selling. Totally. I like how you did that. You're not asking them directly, but you are asking. And if they do want to, they can obviously bring that up. Mm -hmm. That's cool. The reverse psychology. You're probably not interested in selling. Actually. So, um, you know, how do you run your appointments now virtually? Because I see that you have a sign behind you that says the virtual millionaire show. So I want to know, like, what are, what are the ways of doing that? Yeah. So essentially this business is all about marketing and sales. And so as long as you have a way of generating leads, whether that be driving for dollars, postcards, or, you know, whatever marketing channel you're doing, cold calling, as long as you have a process for getting those leads consistently coming in, because you've spent the marketing dollars and the team to do it, um, all my acquisitions team has to know is, hey, what questions do I ask them? Got to pre-qualify them. And what kind of an expectation am I going to set to make sure that the seller's comfortable to even entertain an offer over the phone? Because I think there's a big disconnect with, um, it's like a belief system thing. When I moved to Las Vegas from Nebraska, a year after I got into this business, I'm like, oh no, <laughs> I'm starting from scratch. How am I going to do this? Well, the faith to fact moment was when I texted a seller the very first time, asked him if they wanted to sell their house. They said, yes. I'm like, can you talk? Get on the phone with them. Uh, start asking them some questions. They're like, yeah, we just had a guy come through, like physically walk the property. And he offered 112, but it was just a little too low. And I'm looking at this, like this estimate. I'm like, oh my gosh, like, this is like a $197,000 house. How could 112 not work? And I'm like, well, what if I could give you like, I don't know, like 113? Would you take that? And she was just like, yeah. I'm like, okay, well, uh, what's your email? <laughs> and like, it was like, no, that, it was like that. And, I, yeah, this is and I'm like, whoa, yeah. there was no sales process behind that whatsoever. That was just me kind of winging it. Now we have like a, you know, boom, 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 like series of questions and introduction and expectation, you know, motivation, you know, like the, the pillars, we have that. But then on the offer call, we process it and we call them back. Then we deliver the offer and the offer's never me. I'm not the decision maker. It's always my mean financial partners and I'm always on the seller's team here. Gotcha. Please open up your podcast app right now and leave us a review and let us know what you thought of this episode. It means so much because the reviews help us get in front of more people. And the more people we can get in front of, the more we can help them achieve financial freedom. And we also get more energy to put more content out like this to help you. So by leaving us a review, it will give you more content to come to help you along in your journey. Thank you so much.
Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. That's cool. So even though you're yeah. saying it's big marketing and sales business, in my experience too, when you find somebody that's truly motivated, it's just so easy. It's so, it's so easy. You're serving them yeah, I mean, by giving them a quick cash offer that helps them out of their situation, whether it's an illness or they need to move into assisted living or et cetera. And this house is in no shape to sell on the market or they don't have time to sell it on the market. Yeah, I mean, to give you a great example, um, I spoke to a lady yesterday and she was helping her uncle as a POA cell. And she's like, yeah, my daughter's a realtor. She made sure to let me know my daughter's a realtor. And she said I could get way more for it if I just listed the property. But I don't really want to deal with that. That sounds like a lot of work, this and that. I'm like, okay. And I ended up contracting a property over the phone. It was in Arkansas. I'm in Las Vegas. It two phone calls and I bought a house for 60 cents on the dollar. That's going to be a home run deal without even seeing the property, nothing. And then we'll just set up the expectation that, hey, we still have to verify condition and we still have to walk the property, check everything off. But as long as everything checks out, we're good. Gotcha. So what's been the biggest change in your life since you actually got going? We're almost in this desperate situation where you're expecting another kid. And at end now, so you've done over, you know, 200 deals like this. Biggest change? I mean, gosh, I mean, just this, like being able to go share the story on a podcast on a Wednesday morning, like it's, it's 10 o'clock here and my team is still making calls, making offers. I have business is still happening. Um, big one for me was keeping my wife at home with our, our, our newborn child at that point in time. So my wife gets to stay at home with the kids. Um, I treated myself a little bit last year. I bought a, a pretty cool car that, one. um, I, I've always wanted a uh, Porsche Taycan nice. for us. It's electric. That's amazing. What color? White. I love that. Yeah, man. So, I mean, th there's just so many different things I could, I could go, go on. on. Right? Like, That's what we want to hear. Yeah. I yeah. want to hear it. Yeah. Well, I mean, like financial freedom to travel, you know, we, we, we go on vacations. I took my kids to Disneyland. Um, this business has changed my life. Like it is changing my life is an understatement. I grew up in a town of a few hundred people in a mobile home park. So like 40,000 a year was a lot of money at that time. Mm -hmm. Our, our business, you know, we, we, we operate on double that every month and so not a year but a month and so like yeah the real estate's changed my life <laughs> big time trips to disney world driving a new car give us a third thing um i don't know man there's vacations like taking so i'll, I'll still i'll tell you one thing that i think a lot of people is going to resonate with taking my whole family on a vacation oh wow like your parents to do that. not my immediate family but like my parents her their kids how did it feel to be able to take more than just your immediate family on vacation and treat them like that it wasn't it was incredible and i'm like this is why this is why i'm doing this and this is why people need to be in real estate is because it, mm -hmm. it affords you the opportunity to be able to do that. And like, you know, just like the, the look on their faces is just like, wow, you would do that. And like, I'm talking about taking my, my um, dad and, and my sister on a, on a trip to Colorado here uh, in a couple of weeks to uh for his birthday to a football game. And, you know, they're, they're working, you know, regular jobs and to do that would be very difficult. Mm -hmm on their own. So it just, it reminds me of why I do what I do. I have a big sign up in front of me that says, remember why you started. That's why I started. That's amazing. I love that. Yeah. So cool, man. And that's the perfect thing to treat your family with too, because it makes memories. And a lot of times when I started, I was like, oh man, like I, I would love to just like upgrade my parents' house or upgrade this car. But I was fearful that, well, maybe they like their house and it would be very yeah. much like a offensive thing for me to be like, yo, you guys need a big, I bought you a house or I, I'm buying you a house, you know? 
And then I settled on, well, I'm going to take him to a concert. I'm going to take my dad to the Star Trek convention in Las Vegas. I want to take these trips that will be generous, but will not in any way ever be offensive and will respect what they've chosen and how they've chosen to live their life while at the same time making amazing memories together. That's, that's what it's all about, right? Like if I, if I look back on all of the memories that were made from these experiences, it's just like, my kids are going to remember that forever. Like I have a two-year-old and a four-year-old, like they're going to remember these experiences. And yeah, it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful that's thing. dynamite. Now I I've heard, even though you've done 200 wholesale deals, you've also then switched gears to start buying rental properties. Like, why have you done that? Yeah. So, I mean, with making, you know, some significant income on the, on the wholesaling side, um, number one, it's just a good tax benefit, right. To write off some active income, but also, um, you know, building wealth, you know, building wealth is key, um, turning that active income into passive income. And so, wholesaling you're only as good as your your next best deal mm. right and one thing that i've realized over the years is um to run a very high volume wholesaling operation from my experience unless you want to be just grinding your face off which um after five years of doing this you get kind of worn down by the monotonous of all the calls and everything like that, unless you have a team in place and you have a good system for it, which we do, but there's a couple ways to get leads and um, we pay a little bit more for them. So inevitably that increases our overhead. So my point is with saying that, I don't want to rely on just my wholesale active income forever. I This is a great business for to get to a point to build that working capital to be able to build wealth, yeah. right? So that's that's what we've focused on is taking this active income, putting it into assets that we can have pump up. That's cash. amazing. It's a feeling of security. 100%. Love that. Well, let's transition to our guilt-free profit section of the podcast. When I was starting out, I was fired up and I wanted success. But then when I started to make some real profits, I felt guilty about spending it on a nice car, or anything, some things like that. So we created this segment to ask some quick questions to you um, and rapid fire action on your take on some of these things. So one thing I do want to know is, did you struggle with that when you bought your Porsche? You think it's okay for a business owner who makes more than their employees to buy really nice things? Um, yes, 100%. You deserve it. If you're uh, taking the risk to own the business, you absolutely deserve it. Did I think like that? for the two and a half years before I bought the Porsche. Nope. This thing was on my vision board for long before I actually bought the car. And I had a lot of limiting beliefs about, do I deserve this mm -hmm. thing? But now that I've bought it, I have absolutely no, um, no explanation needed, right? I have this car. I paid more for this car than I bought my first house for. And, and I don't need to explain myself. Mm -hmm. I, I think that if you bust your butt as a business owner, you deserve it. That's right. You did take a risk. And that's one of the key differences in my mind. Yeah, 100%. Do you think because you own a Porsche, you get worse deals when sellers see you roll up in it or when your employee is ready to ask for a raise? Absolutely not. Why? Wow. Well, I don't roll up in my Porsche because I'm not ever driving to see a house. Okay. So, and and whatever my employees think, that's that's on them. I hopefully, you know, we have a positive enough culture and, and mindset um, that, that's an aspirational thing versus an envious thing. Mm. Ryan, you got some questions, I can tell. Yeah, I would say, I, I want to know, is entrepreneurship for everyone? No. In fact, I made a post this morning that as an entrepreneur, you know, we all have our unique abilities and skill sets. And this business is really marketing and sales. And so I've, I, I, I also mentor some, some people as well. And one thing that I've found is the ones who succeed are the ones who have figured out how to talk to sellers and, and cause that's like the pivotal uh, part of this business. But the post was result resulting around if you're not good at something, find somebody else to do it. Um, and if you're, and if you're only can, if you're only good at closing deals, it's going to be very challenging to scale a business. 
because there's operations, there's accounting, there's, there's, there's marketing, there's like, there's a whole thing. And so the key is, is to like focus on what you're good at. And if, if you're not a business owner, go do acquisitions and make a fortune for somebody who is good at it. Mm, love it. With the opportunities. Love that. Uh, I got to think of another one here. Um, let's talk about for people who are still in the nine to five, is there any, um, rules on answering side hustle calls while you're at your nine to five job? Um, if you're going to do it, make sure you close the deal and that way you can quit your job as fast as possible <laughs> because, um, I have a great example. Uh, I, I don't recommend it, right? Like, I don't recommend you doing other people's business on their time or your business on somebody else's time. I don't recommend that. Just how you do one thing is how you do everything, right? Yeah. I wouldn't want a team member doing their own side hustle on my watch, right? Um, and so I wouldn't do it to somebody else. But on my breaks in the evenings, I would. I'll never forget it, guys. Um, I was at my, my corporate job. And I, I had a seller who I knew for a fact lived in Missouri, actually. And I almost drove to her house from Nebraska, from Lincoln, Nebraska, because I knew she was a motivated seller. Her house was run down, trees growing in her yard like it was vacant for 10 plus years. I'd drive by it every single day on the way to work. And I'd send her postcards, I'd call her, I'd email her. Like I'd done everything to get a hold of her. And I was sitting at the desk. I was like a receptionist at this time, at this, <laughs> at this front desk this seller calls and I knew it was her because it was from the the number that I had for my my marketing I missed it I clocked out took a break about an hour later called her up hey I, I, I'm sorry I sold it to the other guy I was like no it was easily a hundred thousand dollar deal and I've had that happen too yep and then after that I'm like okay well that was an opportunity cost I'm gonna go hire an answering service to make sure that never happens again so then that kind of bridged the gap. Oh, amazing. For that yeah. time. I love, I appreciate and I respect the way you said, if they were my employee, I wouldn't want that. So I wouldn't suggest doing it if you aren't the employee. A huge way you can get around that is an answering service. What's your favorite one? So we've used Pat Live. I'm not saying they're you know the best, but they, they answer the call. They follow the script. Um, and yeah, it worked. It worked for that transition period. We don't use an answering service anymore. We have... Pretty much everybody on our team's answering the call. Gotcha. Cool. Love it. Yeah. So if you guys want to learn more, I believe, Michael, do you have a coaching program? I do have a coaching program. How does that work? Yeah. Who's the ideal person that might sign up for that or want to know more? Yeah, I mean, the ideal person would be, you know, there's a couple layers to this, right? There's, if you are just looking to get your first deal, like I do have a, a, a challenge and a course for that. Um, it's called my wholesale deal starter kit. So you can definitely check that out to learn the, just the, the fundamentals, cool. but then for the avatar, for like the group coaching, that's more for people who already have done deals. They know the ins and outs, but they're looking to create a team and scale. Um, so that's not for beginners. That's, that's more for, uh, people who are in the business looking to like replace themselves. Copy. Well, thank you guys. I really appreciate your time today. If you guys liked the episode and got value, make sure you're subscribed and also leave us a review. The reviews help us make more content to get you to financial freedom. And also check out Michael's Wholesaler Toolkit. Can you give us the URL one more time? Yeah, it's the virtualmillionaires.com and you can grab some free resources on there as well. That's the episode. That's awesome. See you guys next time. Thanks guys. Thanks for listening to the Deal Machine Real Estate Investing Podcast. Please leave us a review and follow along wherever you're listening to your podcast.